Hello my friends, here we are back in Luminar Neo and in this tutorial I am going to show you everything you need to know in one big review. When you open Luminar Neo you have two tabs here, you have Catalog and you have Edit. When you go to Catalog on the left side you will, ha you will have all your folders where you store your photos and you know, sort them in whichever album you want. On the Edits tab you have on the right side you have the tools, you have your edits and you have to, the presets, we'll get to that in a second. On the left side, you have your layer panels. We'll also get to that in a second. I am going to show you something here on the catalog with the newest version of Luminar Neo. If you take, for example, this photo and you go to edit it and you do a whole bunch of edits on it, for this, uh, to make it quick, I'm only gonna do one little edit. I'm gonna take the exposure down, let's say to this. And then I'll go back to catalog and you see I have these other photos here from the same session. I took these photos this week in Acadia National Park. And let's say I have like a hundred photos that are all from the same session and I want to bulk edit them. That means I want to copy the edits I did in this one image and paste them into these other images. The way to do that, you take your image that you already edited, right click, go to adjustment and copy adjustment. Then you go to the images that you want to apply these adjustments to, you click on it, you click command and click all the other images. Then you right click on them, go to adjustment and paste adjustments. And now all those edits you did on the first image, they will be pasted on the other images. And that's how you edit in bulk all your images from the same session. It really saves time and it's very, very useful. Let's move on to a different example. And for the next example, I am going to use this flower image. I'm going to go to edit and now we'll look into the layer panel. Layers panels, in order to import a layer, you click on the plus and then you can load an image from your computer. You cannot load a layer from your catalog. If you want to import a layer from your catalog, you have to go to your catalog and export your layer, then re-import it as a layer. So for this image, I am going to load, uh, I already have here a um, texture. So let me just pick a texture really quick. I will just pick, let's say this one. And this is how you increase the opacity to 100%. This is the texture I'm working with. And let's see, I can change it to hard light. That could be an option. I can choose overlay. This is your blending mode of your layer. So let's, let's say I want to use multiply, for example. That looks good to me. So now I don't want to apply it so much to the flower. Well, each of these tools, they have a, this little uh, pencil button and you can have a brush or an eraser. In this case, I want to erase it with a strength of maybe 30% and erase it from my rose. That way the rose doesn't have as much texture and the texture is mostly applied to the background. I didn't do that good of a job, but this is how you would apply texture to an image. How else can we use layers? Well, there's many ways to do layers. Let's do a different example. I'm going to choose this time, I'm going to use this image. And for this image, I want to color grade it and I can use layers to color grade beautifully. I'm going to show you how I do that. This time I am going to add an image of this thing, this image over here. And can you tell what this image is? This is the same photo, but it's very, very blurred. I blurred it in Photoshop, but if you do not have Photoshop, you can just take a photo where your subject is in focus and then take a subject Take another photo where your subject is completely out of focus, completely blurry photo. It just has to have kind of the same colors in it. So now you're wondering, well, how can we color grade that picture with this? Well, we can use blending modes. And for color grading, I like to use overlay, soft light, or hard light. Overlay will give you the most contrast, which I don't like what it does to the very highlights over here. I can't reduce the opacity. And then let's see, this is the before and after before and after. So that is overlay. Now, soft light, it's kind of, like a, kind of like a more milder version of overlay. It does the same thing, but not as aggressive. So let's see, this is before, this is the after, and that is letter 100%. My favorite one for this image would be hard light. Hard light is kind of like overlay, but more faded. So it takes down the highlights and you lift it up the shadows a little bit so you get a little faded effect so that is before and after before and after let's do one more example of this one maybe in a landscape to see how it works i have this image and i'll go to edits and i will add a layer and this one is the very blurred 
image of that layer. And if I go here and I choose hard light, this is what, we're got, we're, what we have. This is the before and after, before and after. And of course you can reduce the opacity to whatever you like, before and after. One other way to use layer, let's see. Uh, we'll just choose one more example. I will lose this image. Let's use this image. And for this one, I want to load the as a layer the same exact image. Once I do that, so let's see, same exact image. There you go, 100%. So now once I did that, I can change the blending mode to multiply. And there you go. We're getting more detail, especially in the sky. You can paint in whichever parts you want. Another good blend mode is overlay as we did before, but that blows out the highlights. For this image, I think multiply works well. Now, um, the parts in the lower half gets a little bit dark, but we can correct that later. So let's see, this is our before and after, before and after. All right, let's move on to the, our other tools. Now let's choose this image. And if I go to edit, you will see you already have layers that comes with your Luminar Neo, which is these flares, light leaks and sparkles and uh, Stardust Poke. The way you will apply those, you just double click on them and the, it automatically applies to this. They automatically applies in the screen blending mode. If I would put it to normal, you would see the layer. And um, pretty much screen with everything that comes with Neo screen is the pretty much the blending mode you will want to use with them. For this image, this uh, flare does not make sense. But in order to remove a layer, you have to right click on it and you can hide it or remove it. So I'm going to remove it. Let's take a different example where those things do work. Let's say this image. And for this image, if we go to edits and we add one of these flares, now you can see this is the opacity. You have your flares and when you have your layers, you can also flip them like uh, horizontally and vertically. And uh, you can also scale them as needed. So that's one good, good thing to know about it. Let's uh, delete these layers that we used for color grading. And uh, we'll move into the next set of tools, which is the essential tools. We have the develop tools where you can adjust exposure. You move to the right to make it brighter, to the left to make it darker. You have contrast, same thing, to the right get more contrast or less contrast. You can adjust the highlights increase or decrease highlights, you have your shadows, you have your whites and your blacks, and then you have the curve tool. Now the curve tool is a special one for me because I love doing a lot of work with my curve tool. And um, by the way, this little gray mountain over here that you see, that is your histogram. So people that are complaining the Luminar Neo does not have a histogram, well, here is your histogram, you have it. And you can see if I move the whites to the right, your histogram moves. And if I move the blacks to the left, you will see your histogram will move shift to the left and it will show us we're blowing out bla uh, blacks. So how do we use the um, tone curve? Well, you have this white dot and then you have red, green and blue. White dot is the luminance. So we affect the luminance. If we move the point up, we're brightening the image. If we move it down, we're darkening the image. If you move this left side up, this, this is your shadows over here and this is your highlights on the other side. So if I move up my shadows, I'm fading the image. That's how you get those faded images. The same thing, if I move down the highlights, I'm darkening the highlights, so I'm getting that faded image as well. To get a really easy faded image, you'll bring down the highlights a little bit, you bring up the shadows a little bit, and there you go. This is our before and after. Before and after we got a faded image. Now, most of the time you will hear people saying about an S-curve. This is what they mean. They mean they're bringing down the shadows a little bit, this is your blacks, this is your shadows, this is your midtones, this is your highlights, and this is your whites. So bring down the shadows and bring up the highlights. And now you're getting an S curve, which gives you contrast. This is the before and this is the after. We added a lot of contrast. 
Now, you know, you can also lift up the blacks and fade it out a little bit and so on. Now, we, this is the luminance. Now we have the reds. If you increase the reds, you're adding red in your image. If you pull it down, you're adding the opposite color of reds, which is uh, cyan. Double click to reset. Greens, you move it up, you're adding greens onto your image and you drag it down, you're adding the opposite, which is magenta. The same thing with blue, you, add, you can add blue or you can add yellow. Now, a lot of the times you would use it and uh, let's see, how would you use it? Well, in the blue channel, you can, for example, uh, drag it up to add some blues into the shadows and then you might drag it down to add some highlights, yellow into the highlights, and then you color grade your image. This is the before and after. Let's reset this. See what other tools do we have? Do we have the color tools? And these color tools, you can use the eyedropper tool to adjust your white balance. You can click on the eyedropper tool and click on something that it should be neutral on your image, and it will try to do automatically uh, as good as possible of co white color balance. Or you can do it manually. You can add blue on your image, or you can add yellow on your image. You can add green on your tint or magenta. You can you have the saturation slider to increase or decrease saturation, and you have the vibrance. Vibrance, it's kind of like a mild way of saturation, and it protects skin tone. So you see how high I can go with vibrance, and it doesn't completely destroy my image. If I do that with saturation, the oranges and the skin tones are just too weird. Then moving down, you have sharpness, where you increase the sharpness if you want to add some sharpness. You have noise reduction, optics, um, and transformation. Transformation is for when you work with landscapes and you have to adjust your lines to make sure they are vertical and however they should be. They just added that, I think, in the latest version. Then you have one of my favorite tools, and this is Enhance. When you increase this, it just kind of balances the whole image out. It messes with colors, it messes with the luminance of the image, and usually it's a pretty good starting point, and um, I like using Enhance. I am going to take a different example, and let's see, I will... Which example should we take? Let's take this example. And this example, if you go to erase and you need to erase something from your image, like for example, I want to erase this leaves, let's say, the one that is coming almost out of her head, I can just paint over it and click erase. And the program will do its best to do like a content aware fill where it removes it. And you can still see a little bit of line over there. I'll do it again. It's not perfect, but it did remove the leaf. The remove power lines, if you have power lines, you'll just click this button and the program automatically finds the power lines and erase them. And the same thing with dust spots. If you have dust spots, you just click the remove dust spots and it removes the dust spots. Structure, it's just kind of a, a little bit more of a sharpness, clarity. Don't go too much overboard. You see it added a lot of clarity to the face. And this is before and after, and the leaves and everything else. That can make or destroy your image. In this case, I do not like what it does. It does the background more, make it more busy. So let's reset that. Then you have colors. In the colors, you have your saturation. You can increase or decrease the saturation, or the vibrance. Vibrance, it's kind of like saturation, but it protects skin tones. If you see, I can move at 100%, and of course it doesn't look that great, but it protects the skin tones, where saturation, if I move it to 100%, the skin tones look really, really orange. Then you have remove color cast, if you do have color cast in your image. Then we have black and white, this is where, you com where we convert our images black and white. You click this button, and then you have control over the luminance and saturation of each one of the colors in your image, and you can adjust the black and whites however you please. Let's choose a different image. We'll choose this one so we don't get bored of the same image. And we'll go to details. Details are just like clarity and sharpness. And the small detail, sometimes you have to be careful. If you just increase the small detail, you might just increase the noise if you do have noise in your image. And then you have medium detail and large details. And that's how you add the details to your image. I usually don't like to add pretty much any of those. 
Then you have the noise. If you have noise in your image, you will, you know, remove the noise in your image with that. Pretty easy to do. We have landscapes and here we can have the haze. If you have haze in your image, this is what you would apply. The haze also works if you have blue sky and you increase it a little bit or make the blue a little bit bluer. And you can tell that by the blue cast is bringing in the image the more I bring it to the right. Golden hour will add some gold onto the highlights. Maybe this is not a good example for this. Let's pick a different example so you can see it a little bit better. Let's do this one. So let's go back to our landscape. So the haze, you see, cuts down the haze into atmosphere. So you can see those back mountains more. Golden hour adds this gold tone into the highlights. And foliage enhancer, it just makes the green more greener. I'm going to reset that. Then we have vignette where let's do a different example. And I love vignette because for this program, it lets you do a custom vignette. So I'll show you what I mean. If I go to edit and I go to vignette, then I can choose my subject. So in this case, it just so happened that it's in the middle of the image. And then you can do a black vignette or a white vignette. But if your, your subject is, let's reset it. If your subject will be on the right side, for example, you can choose it over here. And now you're creating a vignette that is on that side, which most programs just do it in the center. But this one, you can kind of adjust it where you want. You also have advanced settings. You can make it more round or more square. You can feather it. You see, this is a, let's, let's do the amount a lot more. So this is what's happening. This is round on the, to the right and square to the left. Then you have feather to the left is not feather at all. So it's a very harsh um, line between. And then to the right is feather to 100%. And then you can add some light in the inner light. So you're brightening the inside. So of course you will not go that much. You'll just do probably a very, very small amount, but that's just an example. Now that was the essential tab. Let's move into the creative tab. Onto the creative tab, we have relight and let's choose a different example for the relight. I'm just going to work with this one again. So let's go back to relight and we can brighten the near or we can darken the near. And this is working by creating a depth map. So you see, it's not a linear um, gradient from the bottom to the top and so on. So I just kind of, this is in the foreground this is my subject. The program knows this. So let's say I want to brighten my subject and then I want to darken the background. And now I'm creating this contrast to make her pop out of the image. So that's before, that's after, before, after. And then the depth, I can change the depth with this lighter. So my lightness goes further and, you know, closer. One good, uh, way to work with this tool, the best way to work with this tool is to take your foreground and your background completely separate. So what do I mean by that? Let's say I want to brighten my foreground. I will brighten it and then I'll click on relight and it closes it. Then if I open it again, now I can work on my background separately. So I can darken the background. And now these are in completely different edits. I have the relight for foreground and background, and then I can just, go and alter them however I want separately. Let's uh, move to the next tool and that is the sky. Sky is for replacing sky. Let's pick a sky over here and it's really easy to use. You just click on it. You select the sky and pick a sky that will work for your image. If you have a, you know, blue sky with no sunset that is taken in the middle of the day, you probably do, want, do not want to apply a sky that is all sunset and yellow because the lights will not match and it will look weird. So make sure that you pick one that works. Also look at the direction the light is coming from or if it's overcast and make sure it does fit and it matches your image. For this image, I'll probably pick something like that, let's say. Let's reset that. So that was the sky. You have a lot of, uh, by the way, once you choose your sky, let's say I choose that, then you have a lot of, oops, accidentally I went out of it. So I'm going to go back to my sky. You can change the sky or, uh, orientation, position. 
you can bring it down you can move it up vertical you can do the mask refinement where you make the blending between the foreground and the sky uh, work better gaps fix details scene relight this is where you bring in the colors from the sky into your foreground to make it match a little bit better relight saturation if you have a human you can relight the human and if you have reflection and so on there are lots of tools for you to work with there so that was sky let's move on to the atmosphere here's where you can add fog uh, layer fog mist or haze and the way it works you just pick whichever one you want and you can increase it and this image you can't see it so well let's pick a different image and let's say if we have some woodland scene um, let's say this one I shot this one last week in Acadia National Park it was not a foggy day but let's see if we can add some fog and there you go we can add some fog right there on the background if you choose layer fog it will just be kind of like at the base like on the bottom it, it's putting it over the water here so you can increase the depth this is not this is not working for this image because it puts it right in the foreground and usually the fog will be in the background it will not be in the foreground let's see mist there you go you get some mist and you know so on you play with this I'm sure you can come up with something very creative then we have sun rays sun rays if you add a fake sun and your image for example in this image if I want to add a fake sun I will go to the sun rays I will place where I want the sun to be and I can tell the sun is over here naturally so I'll put it there it makes no sense to put it somewhere else because that's where the sun was and you can increase the amount and play with all this sun rays and overall and all that stuff and this is our before and after with the sun in the picture let's move on into the dramatic dramatic if we increase it it just creates a lot of contrast and I never like to use it I just don't think what it does like to photos but you play with it and you might like it or not it's up to you to figure out mood this is where you apply lots and it's really easy you pick whichever lot you like some are warm tones some are cool tones and it's an easy way to you know color grade your images so that is mood toning is where you um, color tone your image and let's pick a different image and I will show you how this one works I will choose this image and let's go to color to toning and this is the way you will use this tool you will start with highlights and you increase it to 100% now that you have the highlights you increase the uh, saturation to 100% so you can see which color you're working with and then you take the hue and pick the color you want let's say for the highlights I want to pick this you know icy blue and then I'll reduce the saturation until it looks pleasing to me and to the highlights now let's choose shadows I'll increase the saturation to 100% and let's say I want to pick some you know some of these reddish tones on the shadows and then reduce the saturation and this is our picture color graded from before to after before to after so that is toning matte um, it will just make your image matte it will do that faded effect that we did with the curves so if you increase the fade you see you're losing contrast you're lifting the shadows you're bringing down the highlights and this is our before and after with the fade you can increase the amount and really fade it let's revert that let's choose a different image next we'll work with mystical mystical um, I like to use this sometimes especially in woodland images or in uh, wildlife images and let's see where is it over here it just adds this kind of like orton effect this glow makes it a little bit painterly magical so this is our before and after before and after don't go overboard you know some people will take it like a lot like this and you just end up with a blurry photo so a little bit goes a long way that is mystical let me reset this so I'm gonna reset mystical then we have glow 
glow will just add a glow into the highlights it kind of blows up the highlights and gets them a little bit blurry so you know you can add a little bit of glow don't go overboard the same thing as mystical and you have a few uh, options here to do glow or turn effect or turn effect soft they all kind of do the same thing in a little bit different way film grain here is a good one to add for let's say you um blurred out the water or the sky but now everything else in the image has like a little bit of grain a little bit of texture to it except your sky and your water that you soften it up and you blurred it well then in those area you want to add a little bit of grain to match the rest of your image otherwise it would look like you did a lot of post-processing there it will not look good as a whole let's move to a different image as we're getting into the portraits so let's see I will choose I will choose this one and we will go into the portraits and we have portrait bokeh well this is not a good one to show the portrait bokeh so I will choose this one for portrait bokeh we'll go there portrait bokeh and this one you can blur the background behind your portrait the program automatically recognizes the humor into the image and if I move it to a hundred percent you will see the background got blurred a little bit if you hover over your image, you will see where your mask is, and I did a really good job selecting my subject. The, you see this overlay of red where your mask is. And if we go to before and after, before and after, you will see how the background was blurred. I'm going to reset that. Let's move on. We'll choose a different example, and now we can go with this example. And our next tool is Face AI. With Face AI, you can lighten the face or recognize which one is your face and you can lighten it to, you know, bring the attention to the face. And also you can slim face. So you will see, you will squeeze it and you will slim it. I'm going to reset those because we don't need to do that. Eyes. This is where you can um, add some iris flare. You can enlarge eyes and you can do all those funny things. Change the eye colors and so on. With the mouth, the same thing. You can, you know, lip saturation, lip redness, darkening. All those tools are there for you to play with. Then we have, oops, did we go through everything there? Yes. Next we have Skin AI. And with this one, if you increase the amount, it will smoothen the skin. So you see it's removing some blemishes and it smooths the skin. This is the before. And this is the after. I'm going to move in at 100% so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So this is our before and after. Before and after. So that's what is happening. I'm going to move out a little bit and I'm going to show you. Be very careful with the skin defect removal. Because this one can destroy your image. Let's see what it does for this image. If I click on it. Um, let's see, before and after. I don't see a big deal over here, but in most other photos that I tried, for example, let's see. I had a lady that had freckles. Let's see where she is over here. And on this image, and I had a few images that it kind of happens the same thing. It just completely destroys the image. So if I go to skin, and then I increase the amount to soften the skin. And then when I click on the skin defect remover, watch what happens to the face. It adds these blotches where, you know, it thinks it has some sort of blemishes and it completely blurs it into patches. I'm gonna move even more to 100%. And you see that? This is our before and after. Before and after. And that can't really ruin your image. So pay attention when you use it, if it does anything funny in your image or not. Next, we have body AI. Let's find somebody with a body. I'm going to work with this image. And this image, if we go to body AI, we can alter the shape. If you move to the right, you'll get the person to be a lot skinnier. If you move it to the left, you will widen it. So... Normal, skinny, widen. The same thing with the abdomen. You can make the abdomen thinner. You see that? It just goes inwards. 
So please don't, don't go overboard with these things. And especially don't change the body of your clients unless they ask you to. Then we have the high key. And this will just kind of bleach your image and becomes that high key image. You need to have an image that will work for high key because if you just choose a dark image and try to do a high key on it, it's just not going to look right. For example, this potato photo that I took, I did not edit it. That's just a raw image. But because it's dark and I go to just say, oh, make this photo high key, it's not going to work because it's a, you know, dark image and it just doesn't look right. The program is thinking, there you go. That's just bleaching it, but it doesn't, it's not high key. It doesn't look right. So a photo, the kind of photo you want to use in order to make it high key, you want something that already has kind of light tones in it. So for example, so you want to pick something maybe kind of like this, um, it has kind of moderately kind of light tones, nothing too dark, doesn't wear black or, you know, dark or green or anything like that. And then when you go to high key and you increase it, you get that kind of like faded, more bleached look. And that is a high key image. Let's see, what do we have next? Super contrast and color harmony. Let's go choose a different example for this. And uh, super contrast, where I like to use it the most is to bring back detail onto the sky. For example, I'll use this example over here. And when I go to super contrast, the only slider I like to work with is the highlight contrast. So if I move that, you'll see you'll get all that detail into the highlights. I don't usually use mid-tones and shadow contrast because I will do all that contrast into my curve tool. So, but highlight contrast, I find it very helpful to bring back highlights into the sky. Even for portraits, when you have the half of the face maybe is in the sun, it's a little bit blown out. The super contrast, I find it to work pretty well. Color harmony, it's a little bit more complicated one. I have a whole video on color harmony. I have a video for each one of the tools separately and more detailed. So you can go to my playlist on YouTube and find all my Luminar Neo playlist and you'll find every one of these tools in detailed with examples. But basically the way color harmony works is you have brilliance and warmed. Uh, and this just, you know, like a saturation brilliance. If you increase it to the right, increase saturation or decrease it to the left. Then you have warmth, which is kind of like white balance. You can make it cooler or warmer. Then you have color contrast. And this one works a little bit different. The way it works is the color you choose. Let's choose the amount to 100%. So if I choose my oranges, let's say, then the color I choose, it brightens it up. And the opposite color on the color wheel, it will darken it. So because I chose oranges, my oranges are brightened up and my blues are darkened. And then you will decrease the amount until something that it works for you. If I would go uh, and choose blues, the opposite will happen. My oranges will get dark and the uh, blues will get brighter. So let's see if I go into my blues, you see I can make them completely white and my oranges are almost completely black. And you know, that's how you use color uh, contrast. It creates a contrast between the opposite colors and to the color wheel. I'm gonna reset that. Split color warm. The way this one works, you have two slider. One is called warm and one is called cool. The warm one only affects the warm tones in your image. So in this case, it's this mountains and this rock over here. The water and the sky, it's cool tone, so it's not going to affect it. So I can add more warm to the warm tones all the way to make them red, or I can add a cool tone to my warm tones and cool them down. And as you can see, it does not affect the sky or the water because those are cooled tones. The same thing with the cool tones, it only affects the cool tones in your image. So it will not affect the rocks because they're warm tone. And I can add magenta or I can add blue like cyan into it and it will not affect the rock, it's only the sky. The last one, it's color balance. Let's take a different image because we're getting sick of that image and I am going to choose this one. And we'll use color balance. The way the color balance works is my favorite way of color grading images because you have it separate into shadows, midtones, and highlights. And for example, I will choose my shadows and let's say I want to make my shadows more, I'll add more cyan into them, maybe a little bit more blue, kind of, you know, make them really, really blue. 
and then I will choose my highlights and on the highlights are usually the skin tone so I want to add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red to make it more orangey and this is what we have so far this is before and this is after a way to color grade and I think we kind of pretty much went through the old tools oh we didn't go over crop tool let's see we go on the crop tool and if you click on crop AI it's just gonna try to give you a best crop for your image that the program thinks will be right for you and in my experience it never really done a great job so let's see what it does for this image well it didn't choose anything all right let's go back let's choose a different image let's choose this image let's see if we can suggest a better crop for this image so we'll go to crop and we'll click crop ai and it thinks this one will be a better crop for us and i do not disagree i think it's a better crop the way to use crop tool manually is uh, this over here just flips them from vertical to horizontal like portrait or landscape orientation and then you go here and you can do a free transform or you can move the sides however you want and then you have um square four by five and all the you know typical um crop crop dimensions that you will need then you have a facebook feed crop and facebook cover or custom or you can enter the dimensions and do it however you would like so then we edit we talked about everything we edit shows up into edit we didn't do any edits on this image so that's why we don't have anything you also have presets this is where the program it recommends for a preset for your image you can click on them and see which one you like if any of these you like you can keep them as it is or the only other thing you can do with them is to reduce the opacity there is nothing else you can do with presets at this point you cannot alter them you cannot see what they did to create this preset so if you want to use a preset you can use it and then just you know increase or decrease the opacity i hope this was helpful and gave you a better look at luminar neo just in case you were thinking about purchasing it or you know you just want to learn how to use the tools in here so if you are not subscribed please do subscribe i am posting videos almost every day and um, thank you so much for watching my name is Skylar Ewing and I will see you in my next video.